In this section, we've been working with the law of cosines, and it really applies to those that where you give you are given side side side, um, and you need to find other information about it. But we also pick up this formula here of Heron's form formula, which finds the area of an oblique triangle, which we have not done yet, just finding the straight area of a side 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 triangle. This one is really great because we have done an area formula um, in dealing with some angles that are involved. This one you only have to know the sides in order to compute this. Now it does bring in a new variable. It does have A, B, and C like we've been working with, but it also has S. S is known as the semi-perimeter and it is add up all the sides and divide by two. So it's one half of the perimeter of the triangle. And so let's work on this example here and see if we can get the area from it. So the area is going to be equal to the square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C. So the first thing we need to do is find S by adding up all of our sides. So I would say 10 plus 7 plus 15 all over 2. And so in adding those up, you can see that we get 32 in our numerator over 2. So that gives me 16. So now I have enough information to begin filling in this formula. So I'm going to say 16 times 16 minus 10. 16 minus 15, 16 minus 7. So that gives me 16. 16 minus 10 is 6. 16 minus 15 gives me 1. 16 minus 7 gives me 9. So it's just a matter of some arithmetic now. You want to multiply all four numbers together, and that gives you 864. I would definitely start kind of working through this on your calculator as well to make sure we're all getting the same numbers. And then when you square root 864, you get 29.394. So this formula is really great because I don't have to have an altitude of the triangle to do base times height divided by 2. And I do not have to know an angle in order to use the other area formula that we have. So let's put this all together and kind of do an application problem with it. So it says a Chicago city developer wants to construct a building consisting of artists' lofts on a triangular lot bordered by Rush Street. Wabash Avenue and Pearson Street. The front edge along Rush Street is approximately 62.4 meters. Along Wabash Avenue, it's approximately 43.5 meters. And along Pearson Street, it's approximately 34.1 meters. How many square meters are available to the developer? So you can see they've included this nice figure here. You know, and at the end of the day, this is just a triangle with three given sides. And they want to know how many square meters are available, so that's area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the semi-perimeter. So I'm going to say 62.4 plus 43.5 plus 34.1. I'm going to divide it by 2. So using my calculator, I add all this up, and I actually get 140 divided by 2, or 70. Now, it doesn't matter what you call A, B, and C. It's just a matter of when you do area, you're going to do the square root of your S value, and then you're going to do your S value minus each of your sides. Order doesn't matter because it, um, multiplication is commutative. And then 70 minus my last one, right in a room there. So my area is going to be equal to 70, and then each of these differences. So I get 7.6, 26.5, and 35.9 in no particular order. You multiply all those together, and you get a really huge number, 506118.2. And then square root that to give you 711.420 square meters. And so Heron's formula is not bad. Um, really the only grunt work that you have to do with this is finding that semi-perimeter and understanding what S is. But after that, um, it's a lot easier than some of the other things that we've done. And so to kind of summary like the end of our sections, um, we get the law of cosines here. Um, there are other forms like we saw on page 2. And then we also get Heron's formula. And so I hope this went well for you. Let me know if you have any questions along the way, and best of luck with 10.2.